prominent down here in the lower right hand corner is primal merging, beyond egoism, persistent initiative. Uh, beyond egoism means being beyond who you think you are. Uh, and uh, the personality patterns that you customarily live out of. Uh, for example, I showed up at age 16 or so as a very shy person. That may not seem obvious to you this morning, but I was a wallflower. Dating girls was like stepping off a cliff into the ocean. Uh, and getting off the side of the room and dancing with somebody was a huge challenge. And I was just a mathematician, you know, off here in the clouds of abstract thought and interesting ideas and a physicist and you know, I was a nerd. <laughs> and being uh, a shy person seemed like just automatic. I mean, what else could you be? If you're shy, you're shy, right? No, that is not who I am. That is not who you are if you're shy. Uh, this shy personality can be transcended to a degree that's astonishing. Or maybe you're an angry person as your personality type. You just are in a small rage about everything most of the time. A uh, raging bull in, in life's going on. <laughs> well, that's not who you are. Uh, you can transcend raging bull. Uh, you're more than that. Or maybe you're just uh, boisterous as your personality type. Uh, no, you can calm that down for whatever situation you need to. So anyway, what I'm talking about, primal merging is finding your place in your freedom to be more than the customary ego and personality that is habitually uh, discharacterizing your existence. So it's merging with that freedom. It's merging with that capacity to be more than you think you are. To some sense, accomplishing less than you think you can. But mostly, most of us are depreciating the greatness of being a human being. So mostly, uh, primal merging means merging with the greatness that you're neglecting and not letting loose in, in this world. To study the self is to know the self. To know the self is to forget the self. To forget the self is to be intimate with all things. Self drops away, leaving no trace, and that no trace goes on endlessly. If you want to follow Christ the big fish, learn to drown. Not just surrender a little. That means to let the water take care of you. But this is a deeper step. It is allowing the water to drown us, to kill us. To breathe under the water means to breathe death. It means to live in an alternative way of life. It is a new mode of surviving, breathing water instead of air. Now death is the mode of survival drown. This is the baptismal imperative. There must come within us a dispossession of the self. The extraordinary experience of dying must become the ordinary experience of living. The quote just read was certainly a way into understanding St. Paul, who says that when you were baptized, you, you were buried with Christ and you were buried into his death. And I really do think that this buried into the death of Christ is the buried into dying to what Jesus says, if you want to find yourself, you've got to lose yourself. It's, that, it's the self you've got to lose that dies. And the self you've got to lose that dies ain't the self that you think you are when you think of who you think you are. <laughs> that's, the, that's simply the conscious egoic self, the ego self that we have. But when Phil becomes aware that he's aware. He's aware there's something else besides the ego self in Phil. He realizes there's something else. He becomes consciously conscious. And I, I think that what that passage is suggesting is that that is really a transformation of consciousness. It's actually a new state of being conscious. 
You're no longer conscious simply from this egoic, egocentric place. Consciousness expands and you find that you're conscious now of something, of you're conscious that I am more than simply my thoughts. I am more than my memories. I am more than my history. I am something, there's something else going on in consciousness than simply what I thought was going on or what I wasn't paying attention to what was happening. Something else is happening here, right? That's why I get this. So I think this is the mystical death that that passage was speaking of, the mystical death to the point where Paul says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives. And if Christ is living in me, then who's living? Huh. Because then if Christ is living in me, who's living, then who dies? Because maybe what I think survives after death is simply, this, is simply the self that's got to die before I die. <laughs> so that when I die, there's not much left of this who I think I am dying, and it is Christ then who lives. The great Christ, the, the godly Christ, the, the, Christ who is the, the Christ who is the Trinitarian, the Son of God, the Christ who is the godly, the godly communion. The Greeks call it the perichoesis, the dance, the dancing God that Nietzsche could only believe in. You know, the dancing God. But, this is, but it's, it's a healing death. It's the dying death. It's the spiritual death. It's the mystical death. It's the psychological death. So that we then can live as if we were dead. And that's really living. I mean, Heidegger says this, you know, that we're beings unto death. And that authentic human living is one we acknowledge that there is a mortal coil that we're part of. We are. But then there is this other dimension to all of this, which is identity with the beloved. Not just, not just communion, but you become one with the beloved, and there's no longer I and you. There's just I. So that God becomes the I of my I. For the world and time are the dance of love in emptiness. The silence of the spheres is the music of a wedding feast. The more we persist in misunderstanding the phenomena of life, the more we analyze them out into strange finalities and complex purposes of our own, the more we involve ourselves in sadness, absurdity, and despair. But it doesn't matter much, because no despair of ours can alter the reality of things, or stain the joy of the cosmic dance which is always there. Yet the fact remains that we are invited to forget ourselves on purpose, cast our awful solemnity to the winds, and join in the general dance. Am I dancing the dance of my life, a dance of love in emptiness? Or am I caught stubbornly clinging to a self-constructed set of personality habits as me? With fear and fascination, this transformation of consciousness, this losing myself to somehow discover my essential reality is calling me. Let's go deeper. Let's let go and surrender to a deeper flow. <laughs>